Hello YouTube, back for another video. I am tired as fucking shit today, so I'm probably going to do this entire video with coffee in hand. Um, if you watched my video from, well, I don't know, whenever I did it, the last one I did, I apologize for the last couple minutes of uh, Louis uh, chewing on his toy. Holy shit, I rewatched the video, and like he's chewing it for like three minutes, squeaky, fucking constant squeakiness at the end. So if anyone made it through that, I thank you. Um, for finishing the video, because apparently I'm super fucking interesting and I want you to watch all my shit. Anyways, get down to business. Ten more CDs from my collection. I have some stuff uh, stuff coming in the mail soon that I'll be showing as, literally as soon as it comes in. Pretty excited about it. Not a lot of stuff, but some. Yeah, here we go. Um, I only have two Bathory CDs. I have some stuff on vinyl, but uh, here we go. Bloodfire Death all-time classic. I mean, this is... You can't uh, be a fan of black metal without listening to Bathory, and especially this album, um, among some of his others. I wasn't kidding about the coffee. I fucking need it. However, I will say, this repress that I have, I've seen some other people talk about the, <laughs> this fucking record label or whatever you want to call it. I think Sean Count Blagareth has some of this stuff, and he pretty much said the same thing. This is Craze. Craze America. I don't know if it's a record label or just a fucking some kind of label that reprints shit. It's it, it, it the CD sounds all right, but as far as sorry, Louis, God fucking damn it! I need to get rid of this guy. I'm just kidding, he's cool. But holy shit, man, the laziest, laziest label I've ever seen. Look at this fucking shit. Look at this. Just a, a black piece of paper on the other side of the cover art. Nothing, no liner notes. Um, Jesus Christ. I don't know why Corthon's dad would fucking ever, uh, <laughs> would ever authorize this. This is a 1990 repress, apparently. I couldn't remember for sure. But anyway, unless it's something you're getting a really good deal on or you can't find it anywhere else, if it's just convenient for you, don't buy anything from, from, uh, from Craze. <laughs> fucking retarded. But anyway, I don't, it's the album rules. Next, we have, this is a Black Mark uh, repressing. This might be in a... No, yeah, this is a 2003 repressing from Black Mark. Uh, yeah, another all-time classic, Twilight of the Gods, Bathory. I love Twilight of the Gods and Hammerheart. I know a lot of black metal, um, a lot of early black metal fans, uh, when those albums came out, it really, you know, created a dividing line between black metal and, you know, what Corthon did after that. But I don't like all Bathory's stuff. I don't like everything he did. I do like most, but... Those two albums for me are essential. Um, they're not black metal, obviously, but they are fucking amazing. Amazing. I can't stress that enough. I, most will agree on that, I think. Except for just the absolute black metal purists. But fuck most of those guys, anyways. Uh, next up, here's another band that I, I I used to see. Yeah, I used to see people mention uh, this project, and not so much anymore. But I love it. Um, they have two bands two bands, two albums. I'm going to fuck up a lot. I'm so tired. They have two albums. I only have one, but uh, there's Beatrix. Um, the album is called Journey Through the End of Life. Boom. Um, I don't remember where Beatrix are from. I apologize. Somewhere in Europe. I don't know. I shouldn't even say. They're European, definitely. Um, just, you know, how I am with lazy comparisons, I'll just throw one band out there and say they kind of sound like this. Uh, Beatrix sound like Burzum, and that's actually not, it's not a stretch by any means, and they definitely do, I, it's, they obviously are heavily inspired, um, they cover, they cover Burzum songs, Spell of Destruction, as a matter of fact, on this one, uh, I'm not familiar with this record label, it is, a uh, Aeternus, or, Aeternitas Tenebrarum Music Foundation, ATMF, you might, maybe some of you guys are familiar. Um, nice packaging. I mean, like I said, I, I don't own anything else by that label, but nice packaging. It's got kind of that peaceful book style C in there, nice booklet. Um, yeah, man, I should probably check that label out. I'll buy some shit from them. Yeah, check out Beatrix, man. You're, if you're a fan of Burzum or some, some of the more depressive black metal, um, I think it's great stuff. Check out both albums. The other album, too, I don't remember what it's called. Get them both. Next, we have... I'm not a big, brutal death metal guy. I know some of you are at Josh Armijo. I mean, if you happen to watch, I know you're a, you're a massive, brutal death fan, and that's awesome. Um, 
I do like some of it, but some of it for me is, is just, it's not quite my cup of tea. I don't have a problem with it per se. I think it's fine, but um, anyway, this is Beheaded from Malta, um, unique leader. Beheaded for me are, you know, I mean, look, those guys are metalheads, definitely. They're not fucking, um, they're not, uh, shit, I hate to say this. I was going to say they're not just fucking dudes wearing baseball caps and short hair like me, but <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, yeah, whatever, you know what I mean. I, yeah, when you see a death metal band with dudes with short hair and gauged ears and shit, I, I automatically know that's not going to be for me. I'm not a musician, so don't fucking judge. Um, and I mean, <laughs> I say something like that, and it, while it is kind of true, um, looks and appearance uh, don't have anything to do with music as far as I'm concerned, or they shouldn't. I actually prefer when bands don't even show photos. Because, I mean, we all, we're human, we all love, love to judge other people. And I see, sometimes I'll hear a really cool band and I'll see pictures of them, they all look like hipsters, and I have to, to fight with myself to listen again. I know that's stupid, but I think that's something that shouldn't exist, but it kind of does. Anyway, you guys know what I fucking mean. Beheaded. Uh, second album, third album, I'm not sure. Ominous Bloodline is the title. Uh, this is from 2005. It's pretty good. It's, you know, they're more... They're more, uh, I don't know, for brutal death metal, they have substance. They have more of, uh, instead of just sounding super modern, um, they, I mean, I don't know. I guess they're kind of along the lines of suffocation, that kind of stuff. That, but they, it's, it's real death metal still. It's just brutal, along the lines of brutal and technical, but it's not, it's not overblown. It's, it's, it's good. It's good for the genre, I believe. And I think a lot of people think that, too. Next up, oh man, a lot of you guys aren't going to give a shit about any of this. Um, I liked this band a lot when I was younger. They kind of just, as did a lot of people, but they, they kind of just got really monotonous and boring, but I still do like their early stuff, their black metal days. That is Behemoth from Poland, obviously. This is a, this is a, cool, this is a cool release right here. This is Demonica. Double disc compilation of stuff throughout their career. If I remember correctly, all of this is their their earlier black metal stuff, or at least into their kind of black death days. But uh, yeah, this is really cool, man. It's got some rarities. It's got demo stuff on here. Two discs, like I said. It's got a thick, thick booklet, which has got pictures and stuff from um, releases, uh, from the, some of their 90s releases with flyers. And this is really cool. Um, if you like Behemoth's early days, you know, when they, when they played black metal, um, you probably dig this. Stuff. Like I said, I still like their black metal stuff, their death metal stuff. I, I don't have a problem with it at all. I don't think it's bad, but it is very modern sounding. It's very monotonous a lot of the times. I think the songwriting is decent and, and in some cases good. The musicianship is incredible, but it's just, it's, I don't know. It's not stuff I can listen to all that often. Uh, speaking of their black metal days, this is their only uh, pure black metal release I own, and that is Grom. Um, shit, I think this is mid to late 90s this came out. This is a repressing, though. This is a uh, Metal Mind repressing, as you guys might be familiar with Metal Mind from Poland. They just, uh, Metal Mind uh, puts out a lot of re-releases. They're good at it. They put out quality re-releases, I should note. So yeah, if you ever see Metal Mind and you're not familiar, and you're, you know, yeah, re-releases can be, can be dodgy. But yeah, if you see a Metal Mind re-release that you're interested in and you're unsure, go ahead and get it. Yeah, you can trust them, definitely. So Grom's a cool album. Um, this is probably one of the last albums they did that I will still listen to um, somewhat frequently. This is more uh, kind of when they started shifting from black metal to kind of black death. They were putting a little bit more death metal into their sound. This is Pandemonic Incantations. It's a good album. Um, this is also, I think, from Metal Mind. Yeah, but this might be a, an original release. I, it doesn't matter. I don't know. I don't think it is. I think it's a re-release, but anyways. Yeah, man. Got that. As you see, um, if you're a black metal fan and you don't like Behemoth and you, you know you're not too familiar with the early stuff, give it a try, man. I mean, it's good. it's good. They played proper black metal. I mean, there's no there's no doubting that they were doing it in the early '90s in Eastern Europe, you know, in Poland, I should say. It's it's good. Um, like I said, this album is more more black death. They started bringing some black, death metal into it, but it's still very black metal, and it's 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 a very good album. Next, we have... Fuck, I always forget to, forget to take, like, price stickers off my shit. This is uh, one of their most popular albums. It's considered some of their most classic stuff as far as their death metal stuff is concerned. They were still 
still transitioning. There's still hints of black metal on this release, but much more death metal. Um, I, I don't really like this album. I think it's pretty boring, but a lot of people love it. And that is that one. What is it called? The Zoskia Cultus. It's all right. I don't know, man. I've, 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 I've had that for years. I've listened to it. I've tried to get into it in the last three or four years. I'll listen to it like once a year. I'll break it out, and it's just boring to me. Next, we have... This album is actually pretty cool. I, out of their modern stuff, I think this is some of the best. Uh, it's Demigod. They had pretty much, at this point, gotten rid of almost all black metal uh, influences. This is almost just straight death metal along the lines of, like, Nile. Uh, maybe a little black metal left. Not much. Not much at all. Mostly death metal. But I think that's a good album. I, I don't know. I haven't heard it in many years, but I like it. Now we have... This is like a fucking EP, I think. What's it called? Eskaton. That shiny son of a bitch. Uh, Metal Blade Records. It's pretty cool. I like it for... um. This has got some of their... Uh, I don't know. mid two thousand stuff on here. It's an EP. It's got a, uh, it's got a Master's Hammer cover on here, which I think is cool. And they nailed it, too. They played it in just a Master's Hammer style. They didn't behemothize it or whatever. They they stuck to the uh, original. I thought it had a root cover, but I don't think so. He's, yeah, it's got a Master's Hammer cover and then I think a Ramones cover or something, a couple live tracks. This definitely isn't essential unless you are a an absolute behemoth fanatic, which I don't know why I have it. Um, but yeah, covering Master's Hammer is always cool. One of my favorite bands. Um, that's it. 10 CDs. I am going to go back to my coffee, hopefully take a nap before work. Anyways, uh, once again, thanks everyone for talking to me and subscribing. I appreciate it. You guys are awesome. I'm, I'm enjoying, I'm not a real social guy in the, in the real world and not even really in the internet world. So I'm starting to branch out and I'm talking to, to dudes from all over the, the world and that's it's really enjoying it. So keep talking, stay in touch and thanks for stopping by. See you soon.